Sound good, church. Sound wonderful. All right. All right. Well, thank God for y'all. You have come back here. And uh, God is good. He's good all the time. No one good but God. Amen. Uh, we're going to jump in here and get started this evening. This evening's lesson. If you don't mind, let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you again, Lord, and we just thank you and glorify you, Lord, and lift you up, Lord. You are worthy of all praise and honor, and we thank you, Lord, for everything, Lord. We thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, which saves our soul. You saved our soul, Lord. Thank you so much. And Lord, be with us tonight, Lord. Lord, be with me, Lord. Let it be your word that speaks, so that way we can take it and grow. And learn from it, Lord, and help us to grow closer to you. In your mighty name we say, Amen. amen. As you can see, my title, Suit Up. As y'all can see, I got some stuff back here, as you can see. Um, got you some visuals. So we're going to turn to start out. And uh, you know, I'm talking about the uh, armor of God pretty much tonight. So, hadn't done that in a long time. Um, so we got to suit up. Yes, Usually on Sunday nights, we, we try to stay with mostly folks that are already Christians. But you can't get this armor unless you're a Christian. Yes. God only gives this armor to his hard-fighting soldiers. Yes, I'm a hard-fighting soldier. I thought about trying to sing that, but I don't want to hurt y'all yes. trying to sing that song now. Yes. But you can look it up in the hymn books on page 40 in the inspirational hymn if you're curious to see what it says, all right? But it's a hard-fighting soldier on the battlefield of this life. So we're going to turn to Ephesians 6, starting in verse 10. Some of you Bible scholars are already there. You know where I'm going. Um, Ephesians 6, starting with verse 10. All right, I guess I have to read it out of my body. Oh, there it is. All right. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. Uh oh. His might. Oh, his might, right? Now, man's might? No, okay. His might. And the power of his might. Remember that, verse 11. Put on. The whole armor of God. Yeah. Meaning you can't put on a little bit. You got to be all the way in. You got to be all the way suited up. You can't just go halfway. All the way. Whole armor of God that ye may be what? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. If you want to stand, Christian... You have to put on the whole armor of God. Yeah, right. And what some of us do, some some people who are Christians, you don't put on the whole armor of God. Come on. So it makes it hard for you to stand against the wiles mm -hmm. of the devil. All right. Now listen, I'm not talking a, about a physical fight. That's why I put that scripture up there. We're going to get to it in a minute, our scripture prayer. Yeah. Our weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Yeah. So the opposite must be what? Spiritual. Yes, sir. So our weapons are a spiritual fight. Yes, right. Not carnal. Mm -hmm. But we as men in the flesh sometimes focus too much on carnality, not enough on the spirit. Amen. And this armor is not talking about a physical armor where we're going to go fight a physical fight. <laughs> Next verse, 12. For we what? We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Not against. Not against. We wrestle not against right. flesh and blood. Right. But against what? Principalities. 
against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world. Now you realize, just like you are a Christian, now I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait to that last part. I don't get that last part, hold on. We want to look at this carefully. Because we've got to look at this. He says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers. That means people who are in power. It's talking about people in power. Do you realize there are people in power who are in darkness? And they are in control of governments and other entities and men. I'm just telling you the truth. This is what the Bible says. And they have agendas which is being controlled by the darkness of this world. They're rulers of darkness of this world. Just like you're supposed to be walking in the light, there are people out there walking in darkness. And doing evil and thinking of evil ways to get you killed. And Satan is using them. Just like God is using you. If you're willing. See, they done gave up their will to darkness. Now some of them are just sinners walking around in darkness. But Satan is still in control of them. But when they get power in certain entity areas, like at work, that's why when you have a boss who gives you a hard time, that's because that person's in power, but their soul is not right. It's being controlled by darkness, so therefore they attack you because you have the light in you. You're their opposite. You're their opposite. They don't like that. So if you don't have this armor on, you're in trouble. Amen. You ain't got this spiritual armor on, you're in trouble. Now, let's get to this last part. Okay. Rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Just like you have a Christian who is growing into faith and is strong spiritually, you have the opposite on the other side. You have somebody that's in the darkness, spiritual darkness, and they're being operated by the spirit of darkness, and they are in high places. Yes, sir. And they have their faith in that darkness. Yeah. Just like you have your faith in the light. Uh-huh. So they're combating you as the opposite. Yeah. Right, yeah. So spiritual wickedness in the high places. Alright, next verse. Wickedness. Alright, next verse. Wherefore, here it is. Wherefore, here it is again. He stresses this again, y'all. Mm-hmm. Wherefore unto you, unto you, take. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. Oh, you know that. There it is. Whole armor of God. Again, that ye may be able to withstand in the day of evil, having all, having done all, stand. To stand. Having all to stand. Now you're going to have a hard time if you ain't got the whole armor of God on to stand. If you ain't spiritually minded and got the whole armor of God on and thinking spiritually, you ain't going to stand. You're going to have a hard time standing. You're going to buckle. I had a tagline on this thing, on my title. No retreat, no surrender. No retreat, no surrender. Next verse. And we'll get to that later. Stand therefore having your loins girded. With the belt of truth. I lost my belt of truth for my armor, y'all. I lost a lot of things, so I had to make shift some stuff, y'all see. <laughs> but look, yeah. gird up the loins of truth. Gird up your loins. Hold it up. What's going to hold it up? What about you with truth? Truth is what's holding up Amen. your pants, spiritually. It's holding it up. That's what holds it together, is the truth of God, the truth of God's Word. That's what holds it. It's the truth, because you can't change the truth. Even though in our society today, truth truth now needs to be inclusive. Meaning your truth is your truth, my truth is your truth, and your truth is your truth. See what I'm saying? No, no, no. No, there's only one truth. What God said is true. Okay, I'm going to say it. Having on the breastplate, here's that word I used this morning, breastplate of righteousness. Breastplate of righteousness. So we put on the breastplate 
Now, what vital organ is that protecting? Heart. Your heart. It's protecting your heart. It's protecting all this midsection. It's protecting all this midsection right here. Meaning you got to be right in your heart. You got to have the right kind of heart. You got to have a righteous heart. A heart after God. You got to want it. Breastplate of righteousness. Next verse. And your feet sod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. Now, I ain't going to put this on. Right? But this is something like when they wear sandals. And they basically, your shoes prepared. Yeah. Meaning, you got to walk right. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that song, Hard Fight Soul? You got to walk right and talk right and pray right and sing right. On the battlefield, you got to walk right, your feet. You got to walk because your feet is what's going to deliver the gospel of peace. So you can't say, when Jesus says, see some Christians get it mixed up. When Jesus said, peace be still, he saw it, they said, feet be still. And they stopped walking. Nah, that ain't what he said. He said, peace be still, not feet be still. So you got to keep walking. You can't stop. Can't stop the gospel. Next verse. Look at this. Above all. Meaning the other, the other ones were good. But above all. Taking the shield. Now I made a shield. My shield got 12. I made a shield. Y'all know what this is. It ain't technically a shield, but it gives you an idea. Now this shield, this shield ain't, yeah, it's a servant tray, y'all. It's all right. You got to be creative. You got to be creative sometimes. But hey, it's a shield and a servant tray. What's up? Multitask. But anyway, taking the shield of faith. Now we know faith is what? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And we don't walk by faith. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. And if you're going to please God, you got to have what? Faith. Faith is trust and hope in Him in a promise in a God you can't see. You can't see it. you got to believe it. you got to believe it. Wherein we shall be able to what? Well, what are we going to be able to do with this shield of faith? We're going to be able to what? Quench all fiery darts of the wicked one. All. Quench all the fiery darts. Meaning your faith, no matter what comes your way, you, as long as you're stepping in faith with God, you block every advancement that comes against you. Every advancement. Every advancement. Boom. Boom, boom. Oh, there it goes. I told y'all, make sure. That ain't a very good shield, y'all. Please don't, don't don't take the shield of faith. It's, this, this is not the shield of faith. This is just a, a prop, y'all. That's weak. That's karma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about a spiritual shield. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but you take the shield of faith. Now, in a shield in an actual battle, the shield could be used two ways. It could be used for defense, yeah. but also offense. Yeah. And it's offensive. Sometimes we think, not offending, I mean, not, you know what I mean, like you got defense and offense, right? So that shield can be used for both. It can be used for both, just like in a physical battle. All right, next verse. And take the helmet, salvation. Now we're still above all right here. See, above all the shield of faith, above all the helmet. Of salvation. Why the helmet of salvation? I looked at that. I was like, okay, it's protecting the head. But who is called the head of the church? Jesus. You take on the Lord Jesus, the head, which is salvation. You take the helmet of salvation and the sword, the sword of the Spirit. Which is what? And I read it this morning. Hebrews 4.12. I'm going to turn there tonight because we already, already dealt with it this morning. 
The Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, this is a play two-edged sword, but it's a two-edged sword. Cuts you going. It cuts to tomorrow. It cuts deep. So take on the sword of the Spirit, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. So God's Word... <laughs> If you look at this, look, look, look at me closely here. Look at the scripture. So we know to take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is what? So that means, that's a big S too, y'all. That means the Holy Spirit. So God's Word is God's Spirit. Amen. That's right. That's right. The word is spiritual. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And powerful. Amen. Yes, sir. Now, if somebody goes into battle, now, then you've got a couple soldiers, you've got to help. Now, now, when you go into battle, do they do they do this? Do they do this thing? Here, here's the M16. Go kill the enemy. No, no, no. no. Does that ever happen? I mean, it might have did back in the old days when they didn't have time to train, maybe. Here, boy, go on. Just learn. You might die, but go on. But they don't do that today. No. They take you to what? Training. 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 Basic training. That's right. Yeah, basic training. You got to go through training. You got to learn. Yeah. You got to learn how to use this thing. Yeah. You got to rightly divide. Come on, brother. Mm -hmm. And I ain't talking about just be hermeneutical. Hermen what is it called? Hermeneutical. I'm getting it mixed up now. I can't think of my head. Hermeneutical and all this stuff and exegesis and descriptions, all this stuff. I ain't talking about that. You gotta apply it. Amen. You can't just study it like it's a book and then say I'm right with God. No. You gotta walk it. You gotta apply it. You gotta apply it. It has no power until you apply it. Right. It's just another book on the shelf. It's just another book. That's right. Just some words. That's right. That people believe that some man wrote. But I read it this morning. It was inspired by God. Amen. So when you use it and rightly divide it, it has power. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right? Next verse. Let's move on. Next verse, 18. Praying with all prayers. Yeah. Look at this. Praying with all. Praying always with all prayers. Mm -hmm. Praying always. Yeah. So that lets me believe there's, 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 I should never stop praying. Never stop praying with all prayer and supplication in the what? Spirit. Not in my flesh, but in the Spirit. In the Holy Spirit. Watching until we all, till with all per perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Next one. Next verse. Is that it? Was that the end? Yeah, that was the end. That was the end of what I wanted. Okay, now um, now let's go to our scripture prayer. But just remember, you got to put on the belt of truth, righteousness. you got to put on truth, righteousness, salvation. Put the shield of the faith and the sword of the spirit. Well, in the gospel, you got to prepare your feet for the gospel. Walk out the gospel. The Bible talks about walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. Okay? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 10.3. Let's go there now. For though we walk in the flesh, look, look, look at this, look at this. Though we walk in the flesh, in this flesh, so you, you got to see a lot of times we have what we call you have a carnality in Romans that talks about being a, being carnal and being yeah. spiritual. Yeah. 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 Carnal is not always talking about someone who's walking in sin. Mm -hmm. right. Carnal is a way of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. It's a way of thought. Mm -hmm. It's not just you're sinning and now I'm carnal because I'm sinning. And then when we see this walking in the flesh, we automatically think that people are walking in sin because it says flesh. Does it mean that? Yes, it does. But it also means being carnal in your thinking. Yeah, that's right. Meaning you're not thinking spiritually. Right. You're not thinking about how God is leading you in this path to minister to people. Right. 
See, you got to be in touch with God's spirit. Amen. And no one try to understand when God's trying to get you to a point. Yeah. And that comes through prayer and study. There's no other way you do it. You have to have good study habits. That's right. You have to have good study habits. You have to have a prayer life. Yes. You've got to. That's yes, up, brother. Because if not, you, you, you're going to be weak in that area. You're not going to be able to realize it. Okay. Though we walk in the flesh, in this body, in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. As Christians, you shouldn't do that. That's what it means. When we see we do, we do not, that means Christian Christians do not war after the flesh. We shouldn't be warring after fleshly things. Next verse. Here it is. For, our, for the weapons... The weapons, I just laid out some weapons over here, some things that we have, weapons, and faith is one of them, the sword of the word, the truth, the sword. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. There's that word, carnal, meaning it's not in the physical. We're not taking a, a physical sword and going and cutting somebody down. Okay? But mighty through who? God. There it is again. Remember we read it earlier. It's by whose might and whose power? God. God. So it's by God's might through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now I was looking at, is somebody got the NIV. Does it say stronghold too? I couldn't remember. I was trying to think. I was trying to see if somebody else has a different version. It says stronghold. Okay. It says strongholds too. Anybody got any other kind of translation? I'm just curious to see what they say here. The power to divine a stronghold, so it's still the word stronghold. All right, a stronghold. Strongholds is something like what you in the old day when you had a, a a castle that you couldn't penetrate. It had strong walls. It had strong. It was fortified. It was a stronghold. We can hunger down in there for days. The enemy will get tired before he breaches the wall. So what we do is we have a lot of people that have those strongholds on their life. Meaning they got something holding on their life. They've been holding it. And there's a stronghold. But God, by the might of God, is pulling down the stronghold. Like even the same day when Jericho, the walls of Jericho, remember? It was a fortified city. None went in, none came out. But because the mightiness of God destroyed them walls, destroyed Jericho because of their obedience to God. But it was God who done it. But because they had obedience to God, it made it happen. The power came. Same thing with you. The mighty, you want the mighty God to be able to pull down strongholds in your life and around you? There it is. Remember also pray and supplication. Next verse. Casting down imaginations. Well, there's a lot of imaginations. The Bible even says people imagining how to do more evil. Coming up with new ways. That's right. I mean, imaginations. Finding some other way to do some kind of bad. Yes, sir. I, I, I think that a lot of them just sit around the room one day and just sit there. They be thinking and contemplating. Yeah. Like, how can I do this and how can I do that? Yeah. Imaginations. Thought processes. Whole thought processes, casting out all these thought processes that are in your head, the carnal thinking, all that stuff. Every high thing that exalts itself against the what? The knowledge of God. Every high thing. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Meaning anything that puts itself or anyone that puts itself above God. The knowledge of God. So you got men out here in the knowledge of God that's not in the knowledge of God, but they worship men's knowledge over God's knowledge. Yeah. And that's what's going on in our society today. Because of technology, because of all the things going on, you got, you got people upholding man's knowledge over God's knowledge. That's right. It's just the truth. Yeah. And bring into captivity, there it is, bring into captivity every thought. Meaning you got to bring in every thought to captivity that you have. Every captivity. You got to bring it into captivity. Every thought, you got to capture it. Meaning you got to deal with it. Because see, a thought's like a seed. You plant it. If you don't take care of it, it could germinate. 
and they expand into something and produce something. You got to be careful when, when you plant in thoughts. To the what? Obedience of Christ. To the obedience of who? Christ. All right, next verse. And having all readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Mm. Let's go to Ephesians 3. I'm going to end with this. Ephesians 3, 16 and 21. Fortress is right. That's what I was talking about. You got a you got a castle who is a fortress, and it's almost impenetrable. But with God's might, it's impenetrable. Right. Okay. All right. I'm gonna leave you with these scriptures here. That He would grant you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with the might by His Spirit in the inner man. Right. In the inner man. Next verse. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by what? Faith. Faith in Him. That ye being rooted and grounded in love. In love. Next verse. May be able to comprehend with, with all the saints what is the with all, what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height. Next verse. And to know the love of Christ, which passes all understanding, that ye might be filled with all fullness of God. Next verse. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, we ask or think according to his power that what? Worketh in us. It works in you. And unto him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus through all the ages, with all the ages, the world without in a man. As I put that in there, you put on that armor of God. You got to understand where the power comes on. Yeah. The power comes through it because of God, yeah. through your obedience. Amen. The same way you obey the gospel. Amen. There's nothing special about that water. Mm -hmm. I said it before. That's Richmond County water in there, y'all. Yeah. 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 That's Richmond County tap water. Mm -hmm. right. Now, some people might get nervous about you know tap water these days with all the stuff going on. Yeah. But trust me, when you obey the yeah. gospel. That's what makes that water special then. Is your obedience to it. Your faith and trust in Him and your obedience that you heard the Word. You believed it. You confessed. You repented. And you got buried in that water. And through that operation of faith, you raise up newness of life. Now you're a Christian. You're a whole new, you're a whole new person. And now you have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Which you can put on the whole armor of God. So that way you can stand my hat fell off. Because you can stand. You got to suit up. You have to suit up. If you became a Christian and Christian you hadn't been suiting up like you should, you've been setting your armor down over here in the corner like I got mine over here. And yours is busted as bad as mine maybe. I don't know. My armor over here is pretty busted. <laughs> But you got to suit up. It reminds me back to David. I'm going end with this. It reminds me back with David. Remember when David went in there and the Israelites was there and Goliath was challenging them. They were all scared to go face Goliath. But little old boy David coming along. And then Saul said, here, take my armor. And David, and David, and actually what Saul was doing really was mocking him. Who are you? You're a little boy. Who are you? Here's this armor. Take this armor out there and defeat him. You can't do nothing. He's been battle bred since he was a little kid. You ain't nothing but a little shepherd boy, David. I know I'm paraphrasing there. You want to go back and read it. Read the text. I'm not trying to lead you down some fable. Go read it for yourself. I'm just putting it in my words. David, he went to David. He said, you just a shepherd boy. What you going to do against him? He's been bred from war since he was little. 
But if you won't go out there, here you go. Here my arm. Put it on. So now here comes this little boy coming up there saying, how dare he defy the suit? So he was ready to suit up. But he wasn't suiting up physically. He already walked up in... Oh. He already walked up there suited up. Because God been preparing him out there and the, taking care of those sheep. He prepared his spirit and his soul to face the lie. That was the purpose of God. Because he walked up there, and what made him offensive is when he heard defiling the armies of the living God. It made him angry. So something stirred in his spirit and said, we can't be having this. He said, there's no retreat, no surrender. I won't back down. I'm not going to be afraid. And he stepped out there to face the giant. Without a piece of armor on, physical armor. But he had their spiritual armor on. But remember what he told Saul when he tried to put it on him? He said, I ain't approved this, nope. This don't fit. And what he said, this don't fit me. So you better be recognized whose armor you putting on. Don't be putting nobody else's armor on. Yeah. He comes against you in the name of the God of Israel. He came in the might of God. Amen. That's what I was reading all them showing you. Yeah. You've got to go into the battle, suited up Christian, a hard fighting soldier, yes. and go into battle, but be proclaiming the word of God. Yeah. But look at this. What's back there? Nothing. No retreat. You know why he ain't say nothing to protect your backside? Because you ain't supposed to turn and go this way and run from the battle. You ain't supposed to run from the battle. That's why your backside's not protected. Don't need it. That's right. Don't need it. Because you do what God says do, He's going to protect you. You're putting on the full armor of God, the spiritual armor of God, which is going to protect you in the day of evil yes, sir. and from the fiery darts. But you got to do what? You've got to stand and move forward. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not turn around and go... Because that's, right. that's, right. that's when you're going to get an arrow in your back yes, from Satan. Right. Right. You slip and fall. Yeah. Or you quit. Mm. David didn't do that. He went out there and spoke. It's by God's might I'm going to kill you today. I may not be wording the exact way word. Like I said, go look it up. He's saying, I'm going to kill you because you're defiling my God and God's people. And you're going to die today. I'm going to kill you. And we know the story he did. He killed him and cut his head off. And when you... Ooh, when you kill an enemy, don't leave a head on it. Cut it off. Cut it off. I ain't talking about... I ain't talking about somebody physical now. You got to think spiritual about this thing. Yeah. When you're dealing with something and going through something and you sin it and you deal with it through the Word of God and through obedience, don't leave it there. Just just there. Yeah. Cut the head off that sucker. That's right. Talk. That's right. Cut it off. Cut it David off. picked it up. Y'all oh got to see this spiritually. David picked it up. Yeah. David picked that joke up. Took that head. Yeah. He took that head right there to the Philistines like this. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Just like this. Y'all see that? I killed your champion. Yeah, yeah. That's what you got to do to this dark world. Remember the principles of darkness and evil wickedness? That's what you got to do. When you cut that bad boy off, that head off, you take it around and show it. Yeah, yeah. Woo! See that? See that? I defeated it. Woo! Through the might of God. Look at this. That's good. good. It has no more power over me. And it was because of God. And you had the victory through Jesus Christ. Now, if you need to repent for anything, if you need to repent, if you need, if you want to come, if you ain't obeyed the gospel, do that first. Because you're wide open right now. You're going to be controlled by darkness. And you probably already are. 
because you're walking in darkness. You got to come in. Like I said a while ago, I just did the gospel. Hear, believe, confess, repent, and be baptized. Raise the walk in newness of life, and then live your life faithful unto God. Get suited up. Then you'll get suited up, ready to do the work of the Lord. And Christian, if you ain't been suited up, you put your armor down, get it back on. Don't waste any time. Tomorrow's not promised for none of us. Suit back up. Suit back up. Get in the fight. If you ain't put the whole armor of God, put the whole armor of God. Don't be like, don't just put one. That's right. Say, so, well, I got the breastplate of righteousness. I got the sword. Okay, well, where's your faith? I'm right. I ain't sinning. I'm right with God. I ain't sinning. I study the Word. I know the Bible. I know how to use my sword. But where's your faith in it? See? Different parts of the... Be careful and put on the whole armor of God. Okay? And if you need to do that, any of that tonight, as we stand and sing the song invitation. I'm going to switch it up. I'm a heart, my y'all to be back and that's a blessing he's excited and uh he, he's he's ready y'all he uh whew, man i'm telling y'all y'all just don't know but anyway that's me he knows why me and him know what we're talking about he knows man it's just good it's good it's good um jerry says he's thankful um to be back and just pray with him he's got some leg pain he's dealing with you know he deals with his feet as well, uh, but those foot rests, he needs to get those worked out. They got to do something for him because they're bothering you, right? Yeah. So just pray that they'll work that out. The, the people who's handling that for him, that they'll get that situated where to work out for him. Uh, also, let's see. Oh yeah, Sister Banks. I didn't see her message today. I hope I I wrote it down, but I forgot to bring it up here. Um, she says just pray for traveling grace. She's, I think she's in Colorado or something. Just pray for traveling grace for her. Okay. Just that our sister get back safely, okay? Yes, Sister Luann? Um, can I just want to tell everybody thank you for your prayers? Amen. Amen. You know, you probably didn't know that, but I'm going to tell you. Um, I'm going to tell you. 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 I'm going to t
you don't get everything right but yes that's a great testimony that's a great testimony that's that's wonderful and we're going to keep praying too for y'all and continue to pray for them as well and also pray for uh still continue to pray for Janet. she wanted to come tonight but i don't think she was able to do it and earl went home with her so just just pray for them as well keep praying for that Too. That's in God's hand. All right. Amen. That's right. That's what you got to have. What you do it in faith. Strong. Anybody else had? I thought I seen somebody else with their hand up. What? Ed? She's a great example, y'all. She is my and and uh, she's the reason why for me too, y'all. Amen. Don't think that. <laughs> Don't think that. But that's the truth. She trusts me. She keeps me in line, y'all. She keeps me in line. <laughs> now, if she won the lottery, she better let me know about it. I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. It's a joke. I'm joking, y'all. She don't play no lottery, y'all. Don't think she don't play no. She don't play no lottery. <laughs> that's because you know my past. That's why a lot of people don't know my past. But that's why right. that's why he's saying that. He knows my past. Um, anybody else? Steve. Steve. Right now. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I'm going to hold up in 
some kind of bicycle, I mean, as long as it's not a huge bicycle, this kind of, some kind of bicycle, y'all see why they call me Stevie, because I ride a bike about everywhere I go, but the reason I got a bike right now is because I trust you too much, and I trust you too much. We'll pray. We'll pray for you to get you a bike and get you what you need. Mm-hmm. You, ain't, you ain't got to tell us everything, brother. You ain't got to tell us everything. It's okay. We're gonna pray for you and your bike. Get you a bike and whatever you need. Okay. We're gonna pray for you. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. You ain't got to tell us everything. Thank you, though. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Let, let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, and thank you, Lord, and forgive us all, Lord. We're, we're all just trying, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for just blessing us with the opportunity to come before you, Lord, in your throne. Forgive us of our sins, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. We thank you for that wonderful forgiveness. Lord, we thank you for the grace and mercy you give us, Lord, and help us to extend that same grace and mercy to one another and others, Lord, because that's what you want and your and your love, Lord, and we thank you for that. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you uh, be with Jerry, Lord, and, and thank you for our brother Jerry. And he's thankful to be back, Lord, and we thank you for that. We, we're glad to have him back, Lord, and thank you for that. And, Lord, and pray, Lord, you be with his leg pain, his legs and his foot, Lord. The pain that he's having, Lord, and I also pray for the foot rest situation that he'll get that worked out. Be with our sister Banks. Keep her safe where she's at, Lord, while, and out while she travels as well. Get her safe back home, Lord, and we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for Sister Luann and William, Lord. We pray and thank you, Lord, for that blessing. She had two strokes, Lord, and she's not showing any Ill, Ill effects, Lord. We thank you for that. We praise you for that. But also, Lord, we pray that you remove those blood clots as well, Lord. And we thank you for that. And be with William and her, Lord. And, and thank you for them and encourage them and strengthen them. Lord, be with Janice, Lord. And thank you for Janice, Lord. And heal her up of that cancer, Lord. And we thank you for that healing. Lord, and I pray, Lord, that you be with her, Lord, and just keep strengthening her. Get her stronger and stronger, Lord. She desires to be here, too, Lord. And uh, she came, even though she's in a weakened state, she still got up and came this morning, Lord. Tried her. She tried so hard, Lord. And, and I know that took a lot out of her, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you continue to strengthen her and everything. And Earl, Lord. Be with Earl as well. Strengthen him. Give him the strength as well. Lord, and just be with both of them and heal both of them up. We thank you for that. Lord, and Ed is just, is, just, is just praising my wife, Lord, and I thank you for my wife, Lord, and, and I thank you for all that she does. She's, she's a hard worker. She loves her family. She loves the church family, Lord. She, her heart is so big, Lord, and, and uh, we just, I just thank you for her. Lord, thank you. And also, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you be with Stephen. Lord, you know what Stephen's in need of, Lord. You know exactly where he's at, what he's in need of, the situation. Just help him to keep looking to you and pray to you and come to you and know that you can take care of every situation he is in. Bicycle situation, whatever, living situation, whatever situation he's in, he needs to look to you, trust in you, and believe in you, and come to you, and he will take care of him. Lord, we thank you for that. Be with each and every one of us, Lord. I pray that this word today helped us to grow, Lord. Helped us to get closer to you, Lord. And help us to be the hard-fighting soldier we need to be. To go out in this dark, dark world, Lord. Sinful, dark world. And bring someone and snatch them out of darkness into your marvelous light, Lord. That's why we need the armor. That's why we need all that stuff. So we can have the power to go out there and snatch these people away from Satan and away from this dark, evil world. For it's everlasting too late. And help us, Lord, to keep growing and looking to you. We thank you for all these things. In your name, in Jesus' name I pray. And I say, amen. amen. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. 
Him and his wife, yes. So you get some props Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, oh, you want me to say, oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I was being in a hurry, <laughs> sorry about that, but yeah, we, let's say a prayer for that. Lord, we bring the, we bring the entire Boston family of the York because they just lost a mother and a grandmother, and Matron and Shaolin took care of their grand, of his grandmother, Lord. They worked hard, they loved her, there's so many precious things and memories, Lord, and, and they put one on Facebook that touched me and Tawana's heart, we love it, we watch it over and over again, we done did it so many times, just watch it, we love it, that was sweet, yes, sorry. Um, but Lord, thank you for, for Matron and Shaolin, they worked so hard to take care of their grandmother, his grandmother, Lord, and that was that's wonderful, and that's to be commended, yeah. that's to be commended awesome. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for them. In your name we say, Amen. Amen. Once again, we have reached a part of the service to where, for the benefit of